Hi everyone, welcome to a Sip and Spin Spindle Spotlight. Today's spindle is actually a collection of spindles. So once again, I am going to take a look at a specific style of spindle. And one of the reasons why I have three, because I really wanna showcase how differently the same style of spindle spins. So this is what I would also like to call a novelty spindle set. And the reason why I say that is that there is not an industry standard for this particular type of spindle. This is a spool style of spindle. And this original style of spindle, I was first introduced to this particular style of spindle by Heavenly Brosser of Heavenly Knit Chat, and I'll put her link down in the description as well. She was able to find one of these, and the original spool spindle maker has unfortunately passed on. Over the course of the last few years, this particular style of spindle has popped up on other spindle maker websites. Now, the upside is that when you're spinning on a spool or a bobbin, it makes plying that much easier. The downside, there are very few of this particular type of spindle available. So, in my last episode, I talked about Ulrich of Spindelein in Germany, and he has a spool style. Christoph Holzwally also has a spool style, and Traditions in Cloth has a spool style. Spool style. The other spool style spindle that I know of that is currently in production is by Sarah Meyer, and I will put her link down in the description as well. Unfortunately, I don't have one of hers to showcase, and I believe there are a couple others. So as always, if you can contribute to the pool of spindle makers, by all means, please drop their information down in the comment section. I in no way want to be exclusive of anyone. So so if you know of someone who is currently making a spool style of spindle, there's such neat styles to work with. Please feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section. And I will, of course, drop in links to these sites as well. So the first one that I want to talk about is this one by Ulrich of Spindeline. It is, again, carbon shaft. This particular tile style, it is support, but if you'll notice, it has the knob on the top, which means that you could also spin this suspended style as well. It is universal and it, it, it's not too heavy. So I think as you build up the spool, this particular style, if you wanted to spin it suspended, you would be able to and it would not affect the consistency of your single as you built up your bobbins. Of course, I like spinning it supported. There are notches in to keep, so you can put it on, and of course the notch for your fiber to go through if you wanna build up a temporary cup. The style is pretty neat as well because it also has a magnet and I did that on purpose so you could hear the magnet clicking which keeps the bobbin from moving around as you are spinning on it. So to get started with the smoother shaft I'm going to open the fiber up. In this case I have just a little bit of a, of a long fluffy leader and having this wispy little long fluffy piece can really help get you started if you're having difficulty getting a leader started without using or having another leader on already. So I will wind it around, pull up to get it started. This spindle spins very, very fast. 
it also spins for a very long time. So working or filling a spool with Ulrich's spool style spindle happens very quickly. Oops, I got, I got ahead of myself. So let's talk about rejoining. I'm gonna come back down quite a ways. So this piece down here, I'm going to head, pull that out. Go. I wanna integrate both ends so I don't have anything hanging out. This bowl is also by Ulrich, and I like this bowl a lot because it has a felted bottom which prevents it from slipping. I also like that it's incredibly shallow. It's one of the reasons why I really like this bowl. It is shallow so it's not going to affect any of the pieces. I'm going to go ahead and wind on. Now because this is a spool style, I'm going to wind just a little bit differently. I'm gonna wind from the bottom to the top, like so, because that's going to give me a little bit more uh, weight control. So I'm not going to be bottom heavy, top heavy, or middle heavy. I'm going to go ahead and wind it like I would a spool and then it just sits right through the little hook right there, or the, the divot, and I am ready to spin. Again, so I think I'm going to have to do a spindle series where I just look at spinning with the spool spindles because I really do like these. All right, I'm going to put this one aside and let's go ahead and talk about Christoph Holzwelly. Uh, here's the other thing that I love about spool spindles and spool spindle makers. They always come with multiple spools. So you can build two spools and if you have two even spools, then all you have to do is ply from the spools, which cuts down on planning and prep for how you're going to ply, which is really important. So the neat thing about Holzwelly, Holzwelly, it has a bearing tip on it, which is really great. It gives you the opportunity to use a lot of different style of, styles of bowls. It's not sharp, so I can still use a wooden bowl and it's not going to dig in or divot the bowl. And that's always a concern that I have with metal tip spindles. I wanna make sure that they're going to be soft enough that they're not going to damage a wooden bowl if I choose to use a wooden bowl. It spins, it's a little bit slower, so that's something to be aware of. It doesn't spin as long, but it does spin perfectly balanced. And as a support spindle spinner, that's one of the key things that I look for. I'm okay with it being slow. I, I have no problem with a slow spindle, but it, if, if it is off balance, it's really going to create some challenges in getting a consistent spin as well as a consistent consistent s single. So as I get it started, very easy to get started because it is wood, so it grips the fiber just a little bit more easily. I can long draw without any difficulty whatsoever. I have a long enough shaft that I can build up a temporary cup, which is going to give me the opportunity to build a long leader, like so. Now, the one thing about Kristoff, you do have to look for it, it's there. So you have to make sure that you put your spool on the correct way. It also has a spot. or a divot. And once again, I'm going to roll I'm going to wind on from the bottom to the top like so. 
and then it slips right back in. And while it spins just a little bit slower, I can still get the amount of twist in that I want. This is a nice spindle if I want to spend a little bit more time focusing on my single, making sure I don't have too much twist in it. But I can do long draw and the temporary cup beautifully. So I will wind this piece on. Like so, find my divot. So that is the style by Christoph Halswoolley. There's that one, that one. And then the last one that I want to feature is Traditions in Cloth. And I want to talk a little bit extra about this one. This particular style of spindle was originally designed to spin cotton, which is kind of interesting. Traditions in Cloth, when you go to the website and you follow their blog, it's such a beautiful story. The blog posts are absolutely amazing. Now, I have spun cotton with this particular style of spindle, but I felt like it spun just a little bit slow. In my mind that using this as a cotton spindle to spin cotton, it was a little bit like the um, Akka that I showed. It required a lot more concentration and so I switched to using this particular style of spindle for spinning wool and I was much happier with the consistency of the single that I got and it's just me. It's because I'm not a fan of spinning cotton. I enjoyed using wool much more on this spindle. It came with not one extra but two extra spindles that were so beautifully designed and decorated as well as the bands to hold it in place. So it is a very, very secure spindle, which I really liked. And it spins perfectly balanced and that, that rubber band down at the bottom really helped stabilize it. And I think that's one of the key pieces with a spool style of spindle. The spool needs to be balanced and it needs to be secure. So this is the slowest of the three. This spins, in my opinion, it spins a little bit more like a Russian style of spindle. So I'm definitely going to get a much loftier or fluffier yarn, especially if I'm going to do long draw with it. The shaft on it, very easy to get a leader started. It wasn't slippery at all. It had what I would like to call tooth. The wood had a great tooth, which enabled me to get the leader started. And it spins a lot like a traditional Russian style of spindle. So I'm going to be flicking a lot more frequently, but it gives me the opportunity. I don't have over twist and look at how, I gotta pull this in, look how lofty and fluffy this yarn is. So that's one of the things that I really love about this style of spindle is I have some variation and it's so fluffy, lofty, very woolen in nature. And then when I go to wind down, the only downside with this spindle is there are sort of wood burnouts right here, but there is not a dedicated notch the interesting thing about that, these are also smaller spools, so they're not going to hold quite as much fiber. The fact that it doesn't have a dedicated notch though, really doesn't affect anything at all. This style is so much like a Russian. I found myself, I find myself when I use this spindle, 
I definitely do more of a short forward draw than a long draw. And I do have the time to really think about the single. But as you can see, it spins beautifully as well, just like the others. So this was kind of, today's episode was kind of a fun romp through spool style spindles that I am going to label as novelty spindles because there are not as many makers. There is not sort of an industry standard in terms of weight or style. As you can see, I moved from fast to slow. You can spin pretty much any fiber on these that you want. You just have to be aware of the amount of time it's going to take to put that twist in personally. I like this style best for spinning combed top and the bobbins make it great because it makes it so much easier to do your plying. So you fill a bobbin, you can put it on a plying stand or you can slip a couple knitting needles into it. There are so many different ways to ply from these particular spools. It really is a wonderfully innovative style of spindle and tool and it's incredibly versatile. It's also very portable as well. You can work with, you can move your uh, spools around. In many cases, you can buy additional spools. I know Spinduline and Holzwally, you can get additional spools for the shafts, which makes, which makes it really, really convenient. You can just keep building up all of those uh, spindle spools if you want to. So if you've never experienced this particular style of spindle, I would encourage you to try it out. They're a lot of fun. And as always, if you would like to see a particular style of spindle featured on my show, please let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Happy spinning.